60% of my clients come to me for AI consulting after their projects have bombed. And it's not just them. Forbes says around 80% of AI initiatives tank. If you've ever been in the trenches of an AI team, you've probably seen this disaster movie firsthand. In this video, I'm going to spill the beans on the secret sauce I use to make sure the AI gigs I'm involved in don't die. I've banged my head against the wall enough time to figure this out, and I'm here to try to save you from the very same headache. AI projects are a minefield. There's so much that can go wrong. It's easy to get carried away by cool tech like Transformers and forget about what's actually valuable to the customers you're serving. You can be sometimes too optimistic, underestimating the resources you need, or an AI team can spend ages building a deep learning model, for example, that ultimately doesn't work. Aware of these traps, I've developed a personal playbook that steers every AI project I lead. I have a mantra, and that is to mitigate risk in order to increase the chance of success. To cut down risk, I follow a custom AI lifecycle broken down into three phases. Let's dive into them, shall we? This time I was advising a cool music tech startup. They spent two whole years developing a new music recommendation engine, totally stalked about what they had built. But when they launched, it was crickets. The users just weren't into it. So all that effort got shelled. Imagine the waste. Four AI developers pouring their hearts out for nothing. The misstep here was they dove headfirst into building a solution without stopping to think if they were actually solving a real problem for their customers. To sidestep this pitfall, I kick off every AI project with customer discovery. You begin with a problem hypothesis, like our users can't discover new music. Then you get out of the building and interview potential users. The aim is to figure out if the problem you think exists is genuinely there or if you're just chasing ghosts. A few deep conversations with about five to 10 people can unearth insights no survey actually can. Keep an ear out for nuances and fresh problems that pop up during these talks. Sometimes the problem you started with isn't the real deal, but these chats can reveal what's actually bugging users. If that music tech company had done their homework with customer discovery, they could have saved two years and a lot of headache on a recommender no one gave two hoots about. To learn more about customer discovery, you've got to check out Steve Blank's work. The chap is a legend in customer development and an all around entrepreneurial wizard. After you've got your problem hypothesis locked down, it's time to sketch out the AI solution you're hoping will tackle the problem. Welcome to step two, planning. When I'm in planning mode, there are a few critical questions I ask. Is this project even doable? A lot of folks would love to solve aging, but an AI for eternal life isn't exactly in the cards. And you'd be surprised by the number of invisible projects I have to listen to when companies contact me for AI help. Second question, can I develop a proof of concept within three months tops? I tend to pass on any projects that can't get to a POC or proof of concept stage in two to three months because I want to hit the market fast to gather user feedback as soon as possible. Have I got the data I need? If not, where can I get it? What's it going to cost me, both in terms of dollars and time? Do I have the right people on board to build the AI solution? If not, how do I get the talent I need? Part of planning is also figuring out how much cash you'll need and how long it'll take. Plus, choosing the tech stack we might use for our AI solution. Once planning is in the rear view, it's time to roll up your sleeves and dive into the making phase. We're talking phase number three that I call 
iterative development. Here, we start crafting the AI solution bit by bit, aiming to shave off as much time as possible before we hit the market. The ultimate test for your problem hypothesis is whether customers actually want to pay for your product. If they do, you've got a business. If they don't, well, at least you've got a new hobby. To decrease risk, I try to get something tangible into users' hands as soon as possible. This breaks down into three sub-phases. The proof of concept, or PSC, the minimum viable product, or MVP, and the product. For the proof of concept stage, I aim for the bare minimum that'll get the idea across. This version is super scrappy. The model is trained on a slice of the data to speed things up. I push this version out in beta even if it makes me cringe. Better to be fast than perfect. Then I start collecting feedback. If folks are willing to pay for this early taste, it's a green light to the MVP phase. The minimum viable product, or MVP, is about minimal features with maximum impact. It builds on the POC using more data and adding features to deliver something that really solves the core issue for our users. Think of it as a sort of productized version of the POC. Once it's ready, I launch the MVP on the market. If it gets traction, it's time to evolve it into a full-fledged product. Before we go ahead, I'd like to introduce the sponsor for this video. It's a course that I made that's called the AI Leaders Blueprint. It's a three-day crash course and it's synchronous on Zoom. The goal of the course is to equip you with the necessary insights, tools and skills to become an AI leader. With this course, you get 10 plus years of my experience building AI products and leading AI teams downloaded directly into your brain. So you won't make the same mistakes that I made and I made a lot of mistakes. During the course, you'll learn all of those things that nobody really teaches you, like how to manage AI projects end to end. And there you'll hear all the things that we are discussing in this video, but on a way more developed way. You'll also learn how to build a thriving AI team, how to balance R&D and engineering. You'll get a step-by-step -step plan to AI leadership. And you'll also learn how to develop robust, maintainable and scalable AI systems. That part is basically an intro to machine learning operations or MLOps. The course is synchronous and runs once per month. Many students have already taken it and loved it. From the testimonials on the website, you can see that for many, this course has been a transformational experience. If you want, if you're interested and want more info, I'll leave you the link to the website in the description box below. Now, back to the video. In the product phase, we take the MVP and pump it up into a full-fledged system. This is where we throw in more features, plus bells and whistles. While beefing up the product, I zero in on making it robust, maintainable, reliable, and scalable. Rome wasn't certainly built in a day, and neither is our AI product. The product phase is itself iterative. I usually adopt three-month release cycles. At each cycle, I add new functionality. I always keep the customer in the loop and base future features off of the feedback that I receive directly from customers. So let's recap how you can mitigate risk and increase the success rate of your AI projects. My AI life cycle comprises three phases. It starts with getting out of the building for customer interviews to confirm we are solving a legit problem. Next up, planning, hashing out the budget, checking problem feasibility, sorting out data, and the team. Then we get into iterative development. I aim for a quick turnaround, getting a prototype ready in three months or less. From there, it grows into an MVP and eventually through three month cycles into a full blown product. This AI life cycle has seriously amped up the success rate of my AI projects. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If that's the case, please remember to hit the like button. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you in the next one.
Take care.